Then Jesus turned and saw them following and saith unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He saith unto them, Come and see. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. The Church's proclamation for setting before us of the truth in a form that we can grasp begins where we all begin. The Church's proclamation for setting before us of the truth in a form that we can grasp begins where we all begin. The Church's great lesson plan, the liturgical year, begins not simply with the answer, though that is here too, but with the questions. In her wisdom, and if we follow the path of the Church's year closely and attentively all along, we shall see that her wisdom is wisdom itself. In that wisdom, she realizes that there is no answer, however wise, however correct, however satisfying it may be in itself. No answer that can be received as an answer if the teacher who knows the answer is unwilling to take seriously the form the question takes in the student's mind. If a student cannot see that an answer is the answer to the question that matters to her, then the answer is not really an answer. But the Church's proclamation, the Church's essential message, is the Christ, the Son of the living God who comes as one of his own. And her contention is that he is the answer to every question. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art, dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Yet how can he be accepted as the answer to every question if the questions themselves are not taken seriously? Too often our proclamation, ours let me stress, not the church's, our proclamation takes the form of an all-encompassing statement that the so-called true believer is expected to apply to every situation. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Absolutely true, absolutely true. But how useful is it really taken on its own if we don't even know who the me is, or who Jesus is, or what the love is that I need at this moment, or how he offers that love to me. Or it takes the form of a question that begs the question, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? How can someone answer that question if they have no idea what the state of salvation is that such a Savior would bring, or what the word personal could possibly mean in this statement? This may be an important question to answer at some point, but it's not, for most of us, the first question. And so the Church's proclamation doesn't begin with it. Her proclamation begins with more fundamental questions. Our Gospel this morning shows us precisely the centrality of our questions in our conversion. And it's all important to realize that this gospel is set before us precisely as we prepare for Advent next week, as we prepare for the church's season of longing, of examining our desires and our questions. And precisely because Advent is a season of examining our questions and of waiting upon our Lord to answer them, this morning I want us to make a meditation on our gospel. Because that exercise of meditation, that sitting in the presence of our Lord, of following his every word, following his every silence, action, inaction, or, and of letting him teach us both ourselves and our questions, and just how he is both the desire of our heart at this moment and the answer to just this question. Because meditation is all of that, it is the one chief spiritual discipline by which we discover both Jesus in ourselves and ourselves in him. 
Reading, says one medieval author, presents the truth to us, but meditation chops it up, chews it, and ruminates upon it, making of it a kind of broth for the nourishment of the soul. Well, we've had some chilly mornings this past week, so perhaps a draft of warm soup will help us. So let's see where it takes us. We begin in the Judean desert with John the Baptist and two of his disciples, which is to say two of his students. The Greek word is the same. So we are at school. Yet we're not told the content of the lesson. We have no idea what John has been teaching, no idea what questions his students might have had or put to him, no idea what answers John may have been giving them. All we know is John's proclamation concerning our Lord, behold the Lamb of God. And we know that in some sense this statement must be the answer to a question, must have been an answer to their question, because the disciples immediately follow him. Jesus is walking. He's about his business. Yet we're not told what that business is, where he's coming from, or where he's going. So why include all this detail, or this rather this one detail that he's walking, but not flesh it out? Well, in the first instance, it puts us in the place of the disciples. They have no idea what his business is, where he has come from, or where he's going. Yet that he is walking, that he is about his business, is significant. How is it? That ye saw me. He was asked of his mother in Jerusalem. He asked his mother in Jerusalem. Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the same. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart, that is to say, she meditated upon them. So we see him about his business, his father's business, their mysterious business. We're not told what that business is. So we keep it in our hearts and we move on. Then Jesus turned and saw them following and said unto them, What seek ye? So suddenly the disciples are Jesus' business. He turns his full attention upon them. And he asks them a question. What seek ye? Not what do you want with me? Not why are you following me? Not what can I do for you, but what seek ye? The question can mean as little as, what do you want right now? Or as much as, what do you think would give meaning to your whole life and existence? And they answer with another question, Master, where dwellest thou? And again, Jesus' answer is open-ended, come and see. Now, our gospel this morning seems very straightforward, yet at the beginning of the Christian year, it raises again certain questions, or rather, it forces us to ask again certain questions, both of the Church's proclamation and of ourselves. First, what is Jesus' business? Where has he come from? Where is he going? And what is his business along the way? And the answer is, at least from this morning's gospel lesson, and so at least for this moment in the year, we don't know. Second is the question that Jesus asks the disciples, his students. What seek ye? What are you seeking? For what are you longing? Not what do your friends or family think you ought to see. Not even what does the church think you ought to see. But what seek ye? Because no matter what the answer is, somehow, both our Lord and the church, who presents his question to us today, trust that behind whatever answer we give, we ask ourselves long enough and are truly open to the full significance of our individual answers. The one true answer to that question 
will be the one true answer to every question. But for that, we need constantly to be asking ourselves that question. What seek ye? What am I seeking? What do I long for? Third, Master, Teacher, where dwellest thou? Where do you dwell? Where are you living? Where do you stay? Where do you abide? Where do you remain? All of that is there in the Greek verb. Where dwellest thou? And his answer? Come and see. It's not a question to be answered all at once, and once and for all. And yet we shall hear echoes of it in the Church's proclamation throughout the year. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? Believest not thou that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide, remain, dwell in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide, remain, in his love. God is love, and he that dwelleth, abideth in love, dwelleth, remaineth in God, and God in him. The Church's proclamation always presents the only God whom to know is eternal life, and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. But the Church's liturgical proclamation begins by setting us back to ourselves, by telling us to take seriously our own questions, our own desires, in the sure and certain belief that as we examine them in the light of that proclamation, we shall see that there is only one answer, only one thing that we desire, the love that moves the sun and the other stars. But we can only begin to see that answer emerge if we accept her invitation to come and to see we now see it best in a glass, darkly. Yet today, on the cusp of another liturgical year, the Church offers us the hope that in the depths of our own souls, in the depths of our own desires, and in the height of our true source and end, we shall at length see no longer through a glass, darkly, but face to face and know even as also we are known. So come and see, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.